We continue our series, The Race for the Next Facebook, and head out west to talk to someone who comes from a long line of venture capitalists. Tim Draper's grandfather is known as the first Silicon Valley VC. His father founded Sutter Hill Ventures, which invested in companies such as NVIDIA and Palm. Tim is founder of Draper Fisher Jerviston, which counts Skype and Baidu among its many investments. He joins us right now to talk about what some people are calling the emergence of a new tech revolution. Tim, great to have you here with Matt and me. Terrific. Great to be here. And Dad wrote a book, too, uh, he did called write The a book. Startup Game. You're right. I mean, you, you guys are really, you know, you've been in this for a long time in terms of the venture capital game. I want to talk a little bit about Facebook and its valuation, Tim, if we can. I mean, it's topped Amazon.com. Within the next five years, what companies do you think will be an entity that has kind of taken off like Facebook? Oh, it's always hard to know what's going to be the next big Facebook. But... Uh, uh, actually, DFJ had two, two IPOs today. You can look them up. Um, and, uh, and hopefully those two will become as big as Facebook someday. How do you tell, Tim, like, what's kind of the cool idea that's really going to have some legs here? Well, there's something to um, things that catch on, and, and, uh, and they, need, they need to have that viral marketing uh, feel to them. They have to. They have to be able to spread very quickly. They have to create some real value to the user, and uh, and they have to get a little lucky. So what, what do you do when you're going out there uh, picking out products? I mean, for example, Baidu, which which we find here at Bloomberg such an interesting story, and Business Week wrote a a big piece on it. How do you sift through everything and and come to an idea like that, which at its inception may have seemed like um, not such a huge idea as it's turned out to be? Well, I had been uh, I had been exploring China for a number of years before we d we finally um, decided to go after a search engine in China, and we ran into a brilliant guy, um, Robin Lee, who then started Baidu. He uh, he really uh, created this wonderful uh, search engine that that actually uh, technologically now uh, either rivals or exceeds Google, and uh, they have really, they've, they've done an extraordinary job of, of implementing a great idea. You know, Tim, you know, when we look at, we're talking about, you know, the race for the next Facebook, you know, social media, we've seen what Facebook has done, but if you kind of just let your, your imagination go for a minute, I mean, where do you think the next big thing is? Is it, is it something like gene replacement? Is it internet and digital? Is it healthcare? Is it the consumer? I mean, what is it that you think is going to be something on the scale of a Facebook, but perhaps in a whole different category? Yeah, you don't want to, me to let my my uh, <laughs> yes, imagination we do. Yes, wander, we do. Um, <laughs> because I I get into like space flight and that kind of thing. Uh, we do have a space flight. We have uh, SpaceX as one of our investments, but um, really it it all has to do with looking at big industries that exist today and and seeing what where those industries are getting sort of fat and lazy or where they're starting to get. Um, where a new technology can take that industry and do different things with it. And I think uh, that's what I like to see. We have a new company, Expert Financial, that allows private companies to go XPO rather than IPO. And, uh, and that, that kind of thing is, is looking at finance in a whole new way. And I think that that kind of, you know, going after industries that have sort of been the same for an, a long time, it's really nice to see mm. new things happen. Um, I know Hotmail, you know, I always thought the post office was going to be there forever, and Hotmail completely changed the game, and the post office had to completely reinvent itself. Uh, same thing with Facebook. They changed what, what we used to call the neighborhood. Mm. Neighborhood is now this global uh, virtual experience. Where else do you think that we're kind of soft and fat and that we're not maybe it's not in the headlines right now but that you think is really interesting that you're kind of keeping a close watch on here? Well I, I actually think medicine has a big opportunity because that's gotten to be a bit of a monopoly or an oligopoly amongst the drug companies and it's too cushy a relationship with the uh, with the government. Um, the government now. There's a there's something that's gotten fat and flabby, and we really need to re reconstruct that. And maybe there's a startup there that can do that. And and I think also um, education is ripe for the picking for a great entrepreneur. I think we can do a lot with virtual education, and uh, and I think that can 
uh, transform the way kids learn. You, you mentioned kids there, and you have some fantastic kids, and you're surrounded by a lot of uh, fantastic kids. How much of the success of a lot of these uh, new, especially out west, sort of Silicon Valley creations depends on word of mouth, depends on the kind of viral marketing that, that you pioneered? Uh, how much of it has to be popular with the kids first before it succeeds in business? Well, there is something wonderful about, about kids because they force us to replenish as consumers. And they'll come along, uh, they, they might be in high school and they, they'll recognize something fun that we as older people, as I'm getting to be an older person, um, have a harder time adjusting to these interesting changes until uh, a lot of kids start to spread them around amongst themselves. And then those kids then do get older and, uh, and we take these interesting consumer technologies and we apply them to the enterprise. And so what's happened now is we all, uh, we all got really excited about all these new apps. Now the enterprise is starting to apply that to uh, apply apps to themselves. Companies like Box.net and uh, Sugar CRM and uh, Social Text all, all have these new ways of applying all of these new technologies to um, to the enterprise. Some some people, I guess, seventy percent of the ones we polled think Facebook is overvalued. I would think with five hundred uh, million users, that maybe it's undervalued. What, what's your thought on valuations of a company like this, or is Facebook really a different story from any other company that we talk about? Well, I, I think uh, social networking in general is here to stay. Companies like Meebo and Glam and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter all have this extraordinary reach. And that reach turns out to be a really strong marketing, valuable marketing tool. And, uh, and as a result, a lot of good value can come from these companies. So I actually do believe that they're fairly valued. Now, now we talk about the private market for these uh, securities. It's, um, it's a little bit uh, difficult for investors to figure out what these companies are worth because they don't see, uh, they don't see financials. They're just trading shares without knowing too much about the company. Um, that's where expert financial, X-P-E-R-T, financial comes in. Um, a company can go out, not have to be public, not have to uh, report uh, to the public, but uh, but create sort of a walled garden where they can um, they can invest across, and uh, and it, I think it's better for the companies. And it, uh, in effect, you know, some of these uh, second market is, has in effect forced uh, Facebook to go public before they really wanted to. Hey, Tim, what, <laughs> t what about something a little like a Groupon? You know, we've all been kind of scratching our heads. The Google offer for Groupon, um, did they make a mistake? Are they going to regret it? What do you think? I, look, the first one into the game, into a game business in every platform ends up having a big run of it. And it's how it's managed through the transition to the next, uh, uh, the next platform is when, uh, when you really determine whether you got a, a big winner over the long haul or not. Groupon is, uh, as we all know, a great company built on uh, some fun games. Let me ask you, Tim, more about what you're doing. I just came back from a symposium on investing in China with some big names like Barton Biggs, uh, obviously very bullish there, Gary Schilling, more of uh, the bear, you could say. You, you Gary's invest, always a bear. You, you, exactly. You invested in, in, in Baidu and have done very well there. Uh, are you looking for more investments in China? Is it, is it, in your opinion, a place that you need to, that you have to go? Oh, absolutely, because I think almost as much innovation is happening in China as is happening in the Silicon Valley. Uh, we, we really have to keep on top of how things are going there. We have a company called YiPay there that's in effect the PayPal for China, and it looks like they have a great future, and we're very excited about that. We have a, a number of other investments in China, and we will continue to be very aggressive in investing in China. All right, we got to leave it there. Tim, great to get some time with you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me on the show. All right, Tim Draper joining us there from the West Coast.